Welcome to the Mr. Universe Meets podcast in association with the Mansformation Programme. Now, the Mansformation Programme is a 12-week programme for men that want to level up their training, nutrition, lifestyle and mindset so that they can live in a body that looks great, feels great and has unstoppable energy. On this podcast, we're going to be speaking to athletes that have reached the top of their game to understand their mindset, habits and routines and what makes them elite. I want you to take advantage of the lessons they teach and go and smash your own goals. I would love it if you guys would like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy the podcast. All right, so today joined by Ian Kirk. He was a former forward at the Leeds Rhinos. Uh, He played for Leeds Rhinos between 2006-2014. He was really part of a golden age of, of... rugby for for, for for the Leeds Rhinos. The, the the team was phenomenal. They went on an amazing run. Uh, I believe he got five uh, grand final wins under his belt. Um, so, so Ian, if you could introduce yourself, mate, just kind of take us on a little bit of a journey about how you went from amateur rugby to yeah, be part of the, yeah, uh, part of the Leeds of a, Rhinos. Probably more of a long-winded story than most people. Like, I, most of the lads I played with, um, what Leeds did really, really well was have a great youth setup. So... Your Kev Sinfields, your Rob Burrows, your Danny Maguires all played together and we'll, we'll probably touch on this shortly but they ended up with a great nucleus of lads that had been together for a very long time. Um, my path was a bit different. Um, I had reasonably bad asthma when I was a kid um, but I was an alright player. Got kind of scouted here and there like um, <laughs> I think Bradford came to come and watch me a few times but I had a mad asthma attack when they were there so I think they swerved it, thinking, right, well, he's broken. So um, cracked on, played amateur at East Hall, absolutely loved it, loved the culture there. Um, met some great friends, the people that if I bumped into the street now, like, I imagine it'd be like I'd not been away from them for 20 years or whatever it is since I played there. Um, went to Old Care Academy, played a bit there, played a bit, for, managed to play a bit for the first team. Got a, uh, and this way it gets a bit long-winded, so got um, an injury in my tibia that kind of went undiagnosed. Um, and we did a fair bit of street pounding, as I would call it back then. Like, I don't think anyone does it anymore anyway, but long road runs. And that's what seemed to flare it up. Um, but the medical care at that point was, <laughs> I don't want to bang anyone out here, but it was a bit wayward, shall we say, yeah, to yeah. be polite about it. Um, so my mum and dad, bless him, paid for me to have an MRI scan and I had a stretch fracture in my tibia, but I played with it for about 11 months um, and it just didn't heal. So I kind of looked at it like, well, that's me. How old, were then. <laughs> How old were you at that point? Uh, I'll be in about 19, I think. So I made my debut like 99-ish for OKR. I played for about a year, but I was whacking in my buprofen to train and play and it was probably no real way. But... You're a kid, aren't you? And you just want to you just play. Want to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, but probably got it to the point where I pissed it off that much that it wouldn't heal or took a very long time to heal. So took the decision to can it for a bit. Um, when went to uni. And me, me, I never really knew what I would do at uni, but I just thought, right, well, I'll do sports science. So if I can't play, I'll try and help other people play to the best of their abilities. Um, but then it healed. I don't, I don't know where I went next. Oh, York, you know, when it was yeah. uh, when it was still the Wasps. Yeah, yeah. Um, played a few games there. They went bust. It wasn't to do with my wage bill. <laughs> um, and then the lad who I'd played with at OKR was at Dewsbury, said, do you want to come there? Like mid-season. So I did. Spent a while there. Had a few more injuries there, actually, groin injuries and what have you. But then had a bit of playing sailing. Um, must have been like 2004-ish. Had a good season. York wanted to, when, it, when they'd become the Knights, wanted to sign me then. And Dewsbury wouldn't let me go. So the year after I went to York, more out of stubbornness than anything else because I didn't have a coach. I didn't know who it was going to be. Um, I spoke to a fellow called Steve Ferris. I don't know if you'd be familiar with it yeah. within the city where he, he was in charge of him at that time and I just kind of took a gamble. Um, but the, the two coaches they got in were probably the two best coaches. Oh, maybe not the best, but like up there with the absolute best that I've been coached by um, in Mick Cook and Daryl Powell. Um and that was the year, I don't know if you remember, like 2005, we won the league there. League two. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, in, a, in a team that probably played 
Fair enough. We remember that weren't the athletes that Super League teams were, but we were doing things probably that Super League teams were with the pedigree of the coaches that we had. Um, but just similar in some respects as well, because it was just a bunch of decent blokes. Like there was the odd dickhead here in there, yeah, but, yeah. but predominantly everyone wanted to work for each other. Everyone got along well. There was no finger pointing when it did go wrong because sometimes it does, doesn't it? Um, there was none of that. Just had a great year there, um, and I don't, I don't really know how it came about, but I think because those coaches had been at Leeds, they said to Leeds, "Look, he, he seems all right." You got to, to London first. Though, uh, didn't you? I, I didn't. That, that's I think that's yeah. in Wikipedia or something. Isn't it. I didn't go to London first. What I did was I signed for Leeds, and I started training at Leeds full time. And Tony Smith said to me. I don't know if he knows Tony Ray or whatever he was the coach at the time in London. He said, look, we might, you might as well go there because you've probably got a chance of playing where you won't at Leeds this year. Um, so I went there and I didn't play anyway. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I lived down there for about six, six, eight weeks or something. Um, was 18th man about eight times. Never actually played. Got a lot of kit though, really nice kit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then went back the year after and that was 2006 when I made my debut. And then, so how old were you when you kind of like broke into that Leeds... Uh, I would have been 25, okay, which well, is yeah. old in yeah, terms yeah, of... Yeah. Pro athlete. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I think, I don't know. Imagine, but to start off as a pro athlete this. anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was, especially at the time, I don't think anyone looked outside of Super League and Super League youth teams and Australian players and whatever. So it was quite unusual at the time. Um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so so that, it was kind of, that, was, that was how it started anyway. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And, and you, you, you jumped in with Leeds Rhinos at the right time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. They just, I, so they just won the, the grand final 2004. They did. It was, they so, did. And then, yeah, yeah. obviously, you came in 2006. Yeah. And then, so 2007 was really the sort of first season that you, you were playing with them. Yeah, it, yeah, but I think I, I think my memory debut, like April 06, um, wrote off my shoulder in, the, in a Challenge Cup game, so I missed a big chunk. Played a few games back end of the year, but I think Warrington knocked us out of playoffs somewhere, yeah. Um, so I had both shoulders operated on in the off season. Right. Great. Um, which was the start of the injury road. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. maybe no, maybe it was already started, on not it? Um, and then 2007, yeah, started playing more and more and more. And, that, and that's obviously when, you know, Leeds started absolutely dominating, really. I mean, we'll, we'll cover the, the yeah. grandfathers in a bit, but like you said, obviously with this podcast being about peak performance and I, I like to touch on, like say, mindset, habits and routines, but because you were... Um, you, you know, I want to kick off a little bit of leadership, really, talk about yep. leadership, because obviously um, you've been part of an unbelievable team, um, you know, special players, you know, Peacock, uh, JJB, yeah. Kev <laughs> Burrows, obviously yeah. senior, all Maguire, like yep. absolutely unreal players that you were surrounded by. Um, you know, strong characters, strong leaders. Where did you kind of fit in with that? Obviously, you've just jumped up into there. Did I you ever kind of see yourself as... Um, a leader that would kind of speak up or say your piece? Or was it literally a case um, of you had the big characters that say what they say and you kind of just fall into that hierarchy? Probably more the, the second. Yeah. Like, obviously, the, when you've got that many people in that room, it's one of those as well you can... There's an old saying in there, too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Yeah. And, and I, I would stand by that to a degree. I, get, I think everyone has to be... Within a team sport, I, I, like, what you've done is much more difficult like you, you're on your own it's an individual thing and you're accountable for literally everything um, in a team sport like everyone has to be accountable at some point um, your video reviews on Mondays are usually fairly brutal so you, everyone's got to be able to hold the hand up and and the coaches did kind of encourage everyone to have an opinion like right why do you think that gone? Why, why has that gone wrong and not just leave it to other people, but obviously there was certainly a sway towards. You're going to say you're not going to argue with JP. It'd be scary enough. Yeah. To do, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, uh, and, and obviously you had the, the two. I suppose as as a fan looking in, you look at your, your two main leaders, your Sinfield and, and, and Peacock. Yep. very different leaders. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, very know, different. So, like, which our style of leadership actually motivated you the most? Was it the the, the, the quiet, methodical Sinfield, or was it the all guns blazing Peacock? Or was there a time for both? Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I would say definitely time for both. I would I would go back a little bit there though, and in some respects, I would say I don't think any of them motivated me. No, I think I was already motivated. Yeah, I, JP said it on something on a on a podcast recently. 
Um, and almost said you've got no choice to be motivated when you're around those people. But I'll, I'll like in in some respects, how the fuck do you think I got there in the first place? Yeah, I, I didn't. Someone didn't just pull me off the street and say, "Oh, do you fancy a game?" Like, so I, it's not like I wasn't motivated. I was like, "You were already optimally a, yeah. motivated." You're already think, a very driven guy. Yeah, they just. And I think everybody that I've ever played with has been, no matter in what league. I, I don't think you just can't be. You can't get to a reasonable. Like everybody you went, you've ever been on stage with, they've all been motivated, haven't they? Absolutely. Like, yeah. It, it, you can't not have motivation. Inspiration, probably a bit different. So, yeah. like, yes, those characters are very inspirational to me. I, but I would, I would say that I already had the motivation. I already wanted to be there. I already had a work ethic, but they would just help point you in the right direction. And especially at critical times, I think one of the mistakes, I don't know, this might not ring true for everybody, but I think probably what I was always bad at was playing good in games that didn't matter that much. Like Jamie Peacock would be 100% or 110%, I hate that phrase, but 100% plus every single game that he played in. I was not good at that. I could play well other than the Challenge Cup final 2010 where I was a bag of shit, but I think most of us were. Um, I could get up for the big games. You know, you play Wigan, you play Saints, you're like, oh, this is easy. Like, the, you, you're already ready for that. The tougher games were, at time earlier on in my career when, like, your casters and your wakeys weren't, with all due respect, as good. I found it harder to go to those teams and play, like, on a Friday night at wakey. I found it that much harder to be self-motivated then. And I think that's when people like that were more important in my career to say, no, nah, mate, you need you need to have a dig today. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you go to a grand final, the motivation's done for you, isn't it? Of course, the inspiration's yeah. done yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I've been very, very, very lucky. I've put my hand up. Like I've been on, along with the ride with them people. But you motivate, if you can't get up for a grand final, like, why Absolutely. have you started? Yeah, no, 100%, yeah. 100%. But yeah. you touched on there, like the, the standards in the team. And, and like you say, what Peacock was saying there, you, you can't help but be. Yeah. Up for it. You were just yeah. surrounded yeah. and you got that environment of these unreal players that you, you turn up to training with every day and exactly. you go to battle yeah, with yeah, yeah. every weekend, you know? Yeah. So, like, how much did you all demand from each other in training? Like, it, was there anybody that would slack? And I'm not asking name names there, but, like, how was that kind of dealt with if people weren't really pulling the weight? Was that, was that dealt with more from the coaches or was that dealt with from you guys saying, no, come on, yeah. pull your weight, we got a game on at the weekend? Yeah, I think you, I think you probably... You, your nuance would be towards the players, I think. Yeah. Like, then I think that's why they did so well. JP, Kev would be like, come on, mate, that's not good enough. Like, if people turned up occasionally, I mean, maybe have had a bigger weekend than they should have done, stuff like that. Like, it wasn't usually the coach, I mean, they might have said something, but it, but it means less coming from the coach. Your mates turning around and saying, look, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. means way more or me, means way more to most people yeah. than someone who is occasionally seen as the enemy anyway because that's the sort of relationship it can be but you may it saying that's not good enough it means a lot more to you and, you, and, you and it's that hurtful mate. Yeah, like, I, I, you don't want to let them down yeah exactly yeah yeah and when you do it's like it's gut-wrenching like yeah. I, I i had some shocking games like hand on heart and I could go in on a Monday, you could have your video review, you could get pulled to pieces by the coach. And yeah, all right, you weren't looking forward to it, but you know it's going to be over. And at some point, you're going to get another chance to try and put it right. But if that had cost your teammates, you can't make up for that. And that that's the that's probably the biggest pressure and the worst feeling. What, what do you think it was that, that caused you to have bad games I know everyone has a bad game but yeah. was, it, was it the fact that you didn't prepare properly the week before was it the fact that you'd like you say you've always had a bigger weekend the, the weekend before or something or was it just sometimes you just you just weren't feeling it or what's the you know Physical, did you ever kind of like yeah. go back and review why has that happened try to yeah because you, cause you definitely don't want many of them um, I think the, the one that stands out for me 2010 Challenge Cup final I, I don't think I was on my own but I'd I can't speak for anyone else. I was awful. <laughs> like, I, and I think what had happened was Leeds hadn't been to the Challenge Cup since 1999. And it was almost like, 
there was it's almost like a sense of relief getting there, and we'd kind of I don't know, the way I feel looking back. I didn't I wasn't conscious of this at the time, but I feel like we'd almost played our final already, and we were just relieved to get there. And like I don't know how much you know about dopamine and whatever, but I feel like we'd we'd peaked our dopamine and it had dropped off. Or for me personally, anyway, and I played my final and I was just flat and knackered. Um, fortunately, got the chance to re- redo it the consecutive years after we've got beaten both of those. But I don't think that was a performance thing particularly. Yeah. So, so like when you do get burnt out, was the um, what was the uh, did you have much emphasis on rest and recovery and stuff like this after a game, or was it just kind of let's just go in, let's work out through the week and let's yeah. see what happens? Or did the did the, the kind of did the club look after you with that sense, or was that something you had to kind of take care of on your own? I think the, the longer I went on, obviously the back end of my career, sports science, where we came into it more, so you could look more at data, how much are people moving on the on the pitch, what's resting heart rate been doing, how much have we been doing training, and I think they got very smart then with that to say right, actually we've overcooked them a bit, but I don't think usually it was a physical thing because again, if you can't physically get up for that game that's literally a once in a lifetime opportunity, then you, you're you probably in the wrong place, aren't you? Like, yeah. you, you know, you can die afterwards. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it feels at the yeah, time yeah, anyway. Yeah. That's how it feels at the time. Yeah. So so when we go back to the, like what the stat standards and what was expected of the team, did, did you ever like sit down? Obviously, like you say, people would pull other people at training if they were performing and stuff like yep. this. But did you regularly sit down and kind of discuss what was expected from each other? Or was it more just like the coaches telling what you're expecting? Or did you Early kind of- on, probably, yeah. yeah. But then the, the because the culture had kind of been set, it probably needed doing less and less. Yeah. And then it was just like, right, well, if, if that person doesn't fit because of that reason, they tended to fall by the wayside anyway. Um, so as we went on, probably less so that, Every now and again, you know, like if we went on a, a losing streak or something, maybe like crisis meeting time. And usually that'd be when the, the coach would be like, right, after a video review, can you leave coach, whoever it might have been? And the players would almost have a heart to heart and say, look, right, what's trying to get to the bottom of it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, good, excellent. Yeah. excellent. So I mean, dipping back into Leeds, you know, we touched on the coaches there. You had uh, three coaches at, at Leeds. Tony Smith, yep. uh, Brian McLennan and, and, and Brian McDermott. Yeah. yeah. Um, all very successful. Yeah. Uh, which style did you prefer when it came to, one, the, the <laughs> training style? Okay. Because, uh, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, Brian McDermott's Royal Marine, I expect that you, you got beasted a lot. It, 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 On occasion, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so, but which did you prefer from a training style, but also from a man management style? Uh, difficult. I, I think Brian... McDermott had picked up some of Tony Smith's stuff because obviously he was assistant when he was there. Um, Tony Smith, very clinical, very psychologically orientated. So so is Brian McDermott, to be fair. Um, Brian McLennan was much more of a, I don't know, like a philosopher and he would show us videos of stuff like inspirational videos or some were inspirational, some were just fucking comedy to be honest. Like, and, I remember, and I remember like towards the back end of him being there, he showed us this one. I think it was just lost on the lads and I think that kind of like, I don't know if he put a nail in his coffin, but like, I like to feel, think I'm reasonably intelligent and I'm looking at it thinking, I get it, but it's yeah. a bit off piece like. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas the other two very much more like, Clinical mental toughness, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, Brian, like you say, being in the Marines, brought his own nuance towards that. It, my <laughs> my life with Brian, life like not life of Brian. Yeah. My life with Brian started off quite interesting. I don't know. I've got my own opinions about why he was doing what he was doing, but some of the lads used to come in after training and say, "Mate, have you have you shagged his missus or something?" Because he would absolutely hammer me on the training park. Would he? Absolutely hammer me. And I don't know whether he was just thinking, right, I, you can get more out of what you're doing. I don't yeah. know. That's, that's was that, my... that single, singling you out or was that yeah, just, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. I think if you asked people who were playing at the time, it, they would be like... You've done yeah. something to piss him off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then so... Sort of, Do you feel that he got more out of you though from uh, doing that? I don't know. Because yeah. I don't know if I would have gone on that path anyway. It's hard yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very hard to say. Yeah. 
Yeah. I've got quite a strong opposition reflex. So sometimes if people try and make me do something, I don't like it to... You want to do the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so let's dip into your routines. Okay, yep. your habits, your routines. Um, was I met you, oh God, uh, years I don't know, ago. what year was that Molly Power thing? I don't know. Who was it? Oh, I don't you even, didn't I don't do it either. I, I know, yeah. Tell me, I'm, again, tell me, I'm still playing football. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, this is a theme here, definitely maybe. stopped playing football. Um <laughs> So yeah, no, I, I came down to so we had a, a sponsors day. We were both sponsored by Multi Power. Our leads yeah, were sponsored by yeah, Multi Power yeah. at the time. I was sponsored by Multi Power at the time. We had a sponsors day at the uh, the Rhinos training uh, gym, um, and, and obviously it's the first time that, that I met you. And obviously I can see then you lived and breathed training. You know that's yeah, probably yeah. why you were sent uh, to do yeah, that probably, as opposed yeah, to yeah, anybody yeah. else on the <laughs> yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, was that because of your environment at the Rhinos that you that you really kind of took a passion for that or was that something that you already were very passionate about yeah, anyway? Yeah, a, a, a little bit of both. I think I'd already done my sports science degree. I kind of like, I had invested interest in that. Um, probably too much of an interest at times. So I'd experiment with different ways of eating. Like I did a, little, a low carb se- pre-season once. It's not like, I don't know if it's the most stupid thing I've ever done, but it was one of the hardest. <laughs> yeah. um, Always trying different stuff, like people looking at me like I was weird, like all like above board, like nothing shady, but just people looking at me thinking, what the fuck are you drinking beetroot juice for? Well, because I had read papers after papers that said you can get a bit of gains out of that, both aerobically and must and power output. I was like, well, why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. Like, I mean, it looks ridiculous. It looks like you're drinking blood or something in the changing rooms, but to me, like, why would, why would I not? try and get that edge from beetroot juice. Do you Absolutely, know what I mean? Think, yeah. Just little things like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so with the nutrition, was there much help from the club with that? Or did, you have, did you have like set plans to follow or, or was did you kind of just do your own thing? Yeah, pretty much do your own thing. Is that for everybody it, or was that just you because you knew what you were doing? <laughs> oh, did I know what I was doing? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I bloody didn't. Uh, <clears throat> earlier, so earlier on, not as much hands-on help. It's more so now, and, and as uh, when I went back to do the SSC role, there was a lot more of it. They got some guys in from the union, one of these, so there was a lot more hands-on help then. There was advice, and there was a bits and bats of, you probably don't want to eat cake every day, and you maybe you want to eat some rice and some eggs or something instead, yeah. but it wasn't particularly do this, do that kind of thing. Okay. It was just more like ropey guidelines. Okay. Some yeah. of which I disagreed with. <laughs> Which just which caused problems of its own, but you know, yeah, you yeah. win some, you lose some. <laughs> no, absolutely. But like I said, but we we were allowed to kind of just do your own thing. You weren't like, look, I'm going to try this, and you know, they, they weren't like, no, yeah, we don't so want did, you to do that. Uh, they did say they didn't want me to do that. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> um, I got involved with a, a, a few occasions for th- different things like that. Like some people used to get in bother for going and piss too much. I used to get in bother for trying a keto diet or something mid season. Um, I can't remember what year it was, but I started doing a bit of CrossFit. I don't know why, I would never do it now. But And I remember going into a few games with like absolute horrendous doms because I'd done extra sessions during the week. I was thinking, what am I doing? Well, well that's what I was going to ask you. So what did, a, what did a sort of a daily routine look like for you in season normally? And, and were you doing extras outside of training? Um, <laughs> or, or, and I was going to say, was that allowed or not? Yeah, kind of answered me uh, there, but, yeah. but what, did a, what did a daily routine sort of look like for you? Uh, well, when you were training um, and it was in season it's, I mean it's easy isn't it because you're full time to some extent uh, it, it obviously tapers towards the game so you say example we, we, if we played Friday to Friday Friday game might have recovery and review Saturday if not it'd be Monday um, and then Monday's like your work day so your biggest day decent weight sessions probably some sort of wrestle contact stuff and a skill session um, how long did them sessions last for? Like a daft amount of time. Like maybe you're looking at your weights like 45 to an hour max, sometimes less. Sometimes the wrestle or whatever be mixed in with that, so it might be slightly longer, but then everything else is cut down accordingly. Um, skills like an hour, an hour and a half, depending on who the coach was. Like Tony Smith, very like, that's enough, you've done enough. Bang. And keep everything high quality because like, like, well, you'll know exactly. Like if you, if you practice bad if you if you're doing bad practices, then you, you're not going to get better, are you? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you yeah. do, if you do, if you just practice doing crap reps, yeah. you're going to do crap reps. So if yeah. you do, same with any kind of like ball skills or anything like that, if you if you push the boat too far and you're just practicing passing badly, then are we getting better or are we getting worse? So yeah. 
Just keep it short, keep the quality high. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so what time did you sort of finish training? What did you start and finish? Relatively early, like yeah. it. It's occasionally like pre-season we might do double days so there might be like I don't know you might start at nine do your weights do some other stuff have a break go on the field finish two three o'clock or whatever okay, yeah. but there were never like long arduous days very, again very fortunate to like yeah. have that kind of lifestyle so when did you start the gym then because that's was that something that you started uh, while you were still playing no uh no I didn't we did the, the concept whilst we were still playing so yeah Excuse me. So in um, <laughs> so in two, I think it was 2012. Um, my business, my then business partner, who is the lads just bought him out to be fair. But um, Mitch A. Church, we we were kind of thick as thieves. Um, different characters, but very very much interested both of us in. He'd, he'd probably love to speak to you actually. Like he he just wants to be as big as he can and as strong as he can. Now he's retired. Um, both of us just keen as lots of be training sort of stuff. I bought a lot of ropey strongman gear and we started doing um, sessions on a Monday. Like, so we'd train Monday. <laughs> and we've got another mate who'll laugh at this. So we'd, we'd train Monday, we'd do our stuff at work. So weights, wrestle, skill session. We'd then go and eat somewhere. We'd then go to David Lloyd and almost, <laughs> you'll, you'll piss yourself with it. Exclusively train chest. Okay, Purely for Monday. aesthetic reasons. It's Monday, it's Monday yeah. mate. We can't leave it out there, mate. Um, we train there and then just like a, a spit from where David Lloyd is in Leeds is a rugby union ground called Leo, Leo Denzians. Um, not dissimilar to your, That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. your gym. Um, and we'd go there with my pickup with some weights and some farmer's handles and some tyres and we'd do like essentially strongman circuits really. Um, which I think actually did me an awful lot of good in terms of my work capacity, and, and I hate the term functional, but it's not like sitting on a bike for fitness, it's throwing things around, which is kind of akin to what you're doing yeah, on yeah. the pitch. Um, we obviously absolutely love that. People were coming past and said, oh, what are you doing? So we were kind of, oh, this. So then it started kind of within our mates and grew and grew and grew, and then people started paying us to do it. So we were like, this is good. Um, and then for quite a while after that, we were just like, oh, we'd love to have a gym, right? And I suppose that's where it was yeah, kind of born for me. Yeah. We opened it. I think we got the building December 15, which was kind of the year I retired. Like, So I wouldn't have been playing then. I finished in 15 yeah, yeah. after a woeful year at Wakey. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We'll touch um, on that in a bit. But yeah. like, let's talk pre-game rituals or some okay. positions. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did you have any of them? I tried to avoid them. Yeah. Largely because if it can't happen... It can get in your head. Yeah. So I tried to be as kind of like blase as possible, really. Um, I, I used to, I'm touching on the beetroot stuff, used to do stuff like that. Just like, right, yeah. I love me. I think you, you like the beat it shots. Have you ever had them? The, the what, sorry? Have you ever had them, like the beat it shots? No, no, no. I so I'd have one of them. So me, me, if we were playing Friday, back end of my career, when I was probably at my peak, I'd probably eat low carb Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, I would hammer them. I'd have like, I don't know, six grams a kilogram in a day. Always eat Ben and Jerry's on the night. Um, and on them days before, like oh, two days before, I'd be having my beetroot shot on the night or whatever, and then a couple of hours before a game as well. Um, but I didn't really have any, like, just tried to keep it light-eyed most of the time. Yeah. I wasn't very good if I got, you know, like you, people have had visions of people being mad, psyched up and what have you, but that used to throw me off, if anything. Um, yeah. only thing I did used to like doing was getting a parking spot early because car parking yeah. <laughs> car parking leads is terrible so I'd get there usually before me Rob Burr would be there and he's like a mad joker so he'd just be like laughing about all sorts of stuff with him yeah yeah keeping it very light eyed until literally warm up and then right go time then you kind of switch that focus and, yeah. and, and really start dialing for the, what's going to happen over the next trying to minutes, yeah. trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How, how, how hard is it to kind of get that that real focus on the opposition when you're at a, a packed Headingley Stadium or a packed Old Trafford and you've got the atmosphere around you, you know, is yeah. that distracting ever or no, does, does it just so. help with the focus? It, yeah, I think because it is what you hit on there, atmosphere. Yeah. I think if there was one person in the crowd rather than a few thousand, I think that'd pick on the head. Not, not in terms of the, it being difficult, but you'd be able to hear what they were saying and they'd probably be giving me a lot of crap. I think that would be harder 
Whereas when there's just an aura, I mean, when the when the fans sing it, Edinburgh, like like, there's nothing like it, is there? Yeah. Like, seriously, nothing like it. Like, Edgar used to go, especially like, I don't know, my, the vision I've got in my head is like, second half, tight game, they'd start singing that song, and you'd be like, right then, let's, let's see who can finish yeah. each other off. And in, 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 often we would, yeah. not necessarily me, but even if you sat on the bench, you're just like, yeah, go on, lads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well done. It just raises that energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. It does, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it, Old Trafford's even more. It's almost even more dilute, but more noise. I don't know. It's difficult to describe, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I was been to Old Trafford quite a bit. Uh, yeah. The five grand final wins yeah, yeah. Uh, for you. Um, yeah. So obviously, like I said, you, you came into the, the club 2006, 2007. You got your first. Yeah. That what what was that experience like? Because uh, like. Fast. You know, I, I, that's the one that I remember the least but feel like I enjoyed the most because he was my first like people say oh what were you thinking at the time I like, no fucking clue I don't know I was just like yeah, how good's this yeah. um, I remember my first touch of the ball Kev passed it to me behind her own try line on the floor so I just had to dive on it and I was just like I hope it goes better than this <laughs> from this moment on Please go better than this. Well, it certainly did. Obviously, he went on uh, uh, and won that one. Um, and that was the start of winning three yeah, on the, the trot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which was the, um, which was the, the, the best one for you? Was it, was it the first one because you'd, you'd actually done it? Or was it, you know, was it the, the third one getting that, that issue making three in a row? Or, or the final one, you sort of like cementing your legacy there with five, yeah. you know, grand final wins? 2008, I think. Well, I don't know if that was my favourite one, but it's one that stands out massively. Okay. There was a period after half time when I just don't, I don't remember touching the ball. And you know, obviously, go on and drop out somewhere to be it. I just remember doing drop out after drop out and then Saints were class. Yeah. And But we defended it and defended it. And, and to the point where, you know, when you're thinking, I don't think I can do this again. But you could sort of see the look on their faces to think like, how do we score past these idiots? And I think that that almost broke them. And then we scored shortly after that. And I just think they went, oh, right. Just, what, what are you supposed to do with that? And it, don't get me wrong. I think we were probably teetering on the point of cracking. Or I was. <laughs> Can't speak for anyone else. Teetering on the point of cracking. But didn't. And then... Like a tremendous, a a tr- thing a tremendous and resiliency through, through the team to, yeah, yeah, to withstand yeah. that pressure. Yeah. And then... Like you say, come yeah, back yeah, and, yeah. and so and that win. that particular period in the second half like sticks out in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Almost sort of like a, I don't know, a testimony to the team and how that particular team was going throughout those years, kind of thing. Uh, and obviously, with the Challenge Cup, you um, you were there twice on the trot, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. Uh... And, and 12 10, 11 and 12 okay was it 12, right? yeah we lost, lost that lost one as well though, yeah, don't yeah, worry yeah, yeah, if you yeah. want to forget about it that's fine <laughs> did, did, did you kind of think you were cursed with that what was the, what was the uh, mindset yeah, in that yeah yeah I think so in the end yeah because um, 2010 played by a bag of something yeah bad <laughs> um, so like fair enough take that on the chin if you get beat because you play bad you, you can take it quite easily um, it doesn't mean it's great um, 2011 we played Wigan I think and I i don't ever really remember in my career ever feeling like I've been robbed by the ref but there was a couple of moments in that game that were like head pickling I was just like right we're not we're not going to win this and I thought we played pretty bloody good to be honest yeah, yeah. Um, 2012 was a weird one uh, I scored actually which is very rare yeah. <laughs> very very rare um, scored did some I did some of me rib cartilage ended up missing like a lot of the second half and it smashed down with rain but so that's know. three defeats on the trot in the, yeah, in the Challenge yeah, Cup yeah. final yeah so so when you finally won it in 2014 what was that feeling like yeah good yeah but I'd, I'd um, the week before I'd tweaked my hamstring so didn't play a big part in the game I think I don't know I, again guesswork I feel like Mac put me in to say like you deserved kind of to be part of it, but I know you're not going to play a lot of the game. Mm. Um, I played one of my better games I had in my career, probably in the semi against Wigan, I think it was. But anyway, yeah, yeah, um, good to win it. I felt like I'd, I felt like for me that was more for the other games 
the Wigan and the, and the Warrington of the years gone by, really, that, than that particular game. The more relief than anything that you'd finally... Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think particularly even more so for the bigger names within the team as well, for them to win that was like... Of course. Yeah. They deserve to have a, a Challenge Cup win to their... Yeah, for name. everything else yeah. they've bloody done. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my name's Colin Wiseman. I'm on week 11 of the Mass Formation programme with Stuart Garrington. It's been tough, but it's uh, the good type of tough that when you realise all your mistakes for the previous year of eating too much and drinking too much. I'd just say, whatever your goals are, it gets you there. I set out with this as a 12-week programme, and like I say, I plateaued for 10 months, and within three weeks, I beat my expectations. I've had tough surgery during the programme, but we've not changed anything. We've just changed the programming slightly. It's been great all the way through it, so yeah, I'd recommend it. 100%. It's one of these things, I think, if you give it a chance and have a bit of self-discipline, I'm into the fifth week now and I literally feel the best I have done in, like, in years, to be honest. So, so what the pressure of, of um, staying on top? You know, how hard was that? You know, obviously you're kind of like, did, did, did you feel that that pressure of, of being the, the team to beat? Or uh, is it something that you didn't really take much notice I, of? I don't think it was like conscious of it, particularly at the time. What, what, you, what you probably were aware of is that everyone wants to beat you. So if Wakey had been hammered by 60 the week before, take that with a pinch of salt if you're playing them next, because they're going to be at the top of the game. Yeah. So I think from that point of view, people want to take your scalp. Of course they do. Like I'd, I'd be exactly the same. Um, but I, I never really thought, oh, you, you know, you just pressure for you to to do it again and do this again because it, it things are broken down like fairly well into like you know you've got a weekly chance, haven't you? Like yeah. right, that's game. This game is next. Don't look beyond that. So personally, you didn't feel the pressure. But what about around the team? Was there ever sort of things that wow, actually. everyone looks a bit stressed this week? Um. <sighs> Only if we'd underperformed, I think. I don't like if we if we'd not performed as well as we should have done. Like, is he, if you play well and you get beaten, like, right, fair enough. They were better than us on the day or whatever. All things didn't go maybe our way, but if you underperform, that's when because all eyes are looking. I mean, I've been hammered on Twitter before, like <laughs> probably more probably more times than most people. Um, Do you take much notice of that? Do you ever go in and like read? You the, can't. The no, and... no, you can't at some point because it. Would, did they get really fucking personal? Like, I remember, like, and even in some crowds, like, I remember playing Salford away and I was just getting hammered when I was on the touchline. I'm like, what, what has, what has my mum and dad got anything yeah. to do with this game? Do you know what I mean? Like, it, like, well, fair enough. How do you deal with that? Literally just, what off ducks back, just, just yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose you'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah, and it, it to some extent, it's part of it, isn't it? Although, yeah. when they're old, they're not the ground they're in now. The one before that had like a cage where you used to walk out. People used to like throw pennies at you on there. Really? Yeah, it was interesting. That was a bit more interesting. If you're taking it to a physical level, that's yeah, probably a bit yeah, much, yeah. isn't it? I don't yeah. mind a bit of shit, but don't hit me in the eye with the two pence. Yeah. That could be complying, man. Yeah. At least throw a quid in. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, or maybe, a, maybe a note or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, biggest lesson that you can take away from rugby league and apply to everyday life, what would you say that is? Um, I just think it's probably given me, and this is probably... I think it was already fairly resilient because I had plenty of issues to get to the point where I played for Leeds. It wasn't like, I don't know, it sounds like let's get some fucking violins out, but it sounds like I'm, it, no one handed it to me on a plate. Like I had a few cracks at it, stuck at it, and then I was lucky to then catch on to the anchor of a ship that had, that was sailing in the right direction. Um, but I think throughout that, like, you just, I don't know, like an... In, it, you know, with people like JP, he's got an indomitable will. Like, he's very physically gifted. Like, he's a very fit man. But that was exponentially outweighed by his will. Like, you just couldn't, you know. I mean, probably Jamie Jones, similar. Like, he, if you ever train with him or against him, he's horrible. Like, he's great, but don't try and beat him or anything. He would rather die. Yeah. And, like, you know, and then and I get that to a point. But there is a point, and he would, and he would go. He would go beyond that point if ne if needed. Yeah. So yeah. so hanging around with people like that, you're just like right. Well, you know, you'll know. Like if I've had if I had some long days at the gym, like I might have done six till nine or something. Like 
it's in that bad. I'm gonna survive. I yeah. might be a bit tired, but yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? So, 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 so when you when you left Leeds, yep. obviously was it 2014. <laughs> um, they went on the season after that to win the treble. Yeah, in, yeah. In the probably because I left. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? How hard was that to watch? Like, because uh, obviously you're gonna want the lads to do well. Yeah, but like. You could also wish you would be a part of it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so how how hard was that to, to watch them do um, what they did that season? I mean, you always know that it's going to come to an end. I actually had a year left on my contract though, and I kind of got edged out. Okay. Me and Bales at the same time. Yeah. Um. So obviously, from that point of view, pretty good because I should have been, in some respects, should have still been there. Yeah. But you know, it's going to come to an end. Um. And my thoughts on it at the time were right. Well, if if I finish this year, maybe I don't go and play anywhere else. So then I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll leave. It was kind of pushed anyway. Um, but then, and I don't think it would have bothered me had I had not such a, a nightmare season at Wakey. Um, got injured twice, ended up playing about five games or something. Um, Tom McGroin brought me thumb. Celebi. <laughs> I think that was that. You decided mm. to call it a day. Um, I, I, to be fair, I didn't. I um, I very nearly went to Toulouse because I'd always wanted to play for Catalan. If not for Leeds, Catalan would have been my next choice. Complete culture change. Yeah. Love where it is. Love use. I love playing there. Like nothing quite like it. Their atmosphere is like Leeds. It's amazing, but but very different. Very kind of more musical and yeah. carnival like. If anything, um, and I could have gone to Toulouse which was very, very tempting. It's like spitting a throw from where uh, Catalan play. Um, but then, I don't know if it was Brian Mack or Jason Davison at the time, right, rang me and said, right, well, do you fancy an S&C role? Which is kind of what I wanted to do when I retired. So it was, I was stuck in a bit of a tough spot. Like, right, if I turn that down, will I get that opportunity when I do finish? Arguably not. So I had to kind of call it a day playing because I really wanted to do that. Yeah. And, and how long were you doing that for? Uh, three years, I think, there. Okay. And then went to work for the RFL, right. which was another nice one. <laughs> <laughs> so so how, how did you deal with the, you know, you had that routine, you get up, you go train, you'd be with the boys, yep. you know, obviously you kind of had that to a degree when you went back for the, the SNC role for a little bit. Yeah. But the, that, that sort of you getting up for the game at the weekend and stuff, how did you kind of deal with that? I found it miles harder. Yeah. I, it's and then this is like if you're injured or anything, it's so much harder watching the people play when you've got literally no element of even trying to help. Like you can you can get them as prepared as you think you can get them, and then it's like right off you go, do your best. Yeah. yeah. Um, so oh, that was hard, mate. Really, really hard. And a lot of athletes when they when they stop and they've not got that that goal to chase every day, they really find it quite tough. Yeah. Mentally. I know, yeah, I, know, yeah. I, know, I know when I won the universe, which was something that I'd been dreaming about doing, yeah, you know, since, since day oh, one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as you do it, it's like, what now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what, what's, what's my goals now? And, you know, there was a six month period after that that was a little bit lost, really. Right. And okay. I didn't really have much, yeah. you know, I thought, oh, you know, I was aching at that point. I had, the, again, the injuries and the, the shoulders and the joints and stuff yeah, like that. From, yeah, yeah. And I know I needed a break. But then I also thought, right, well, I want to kind of, I, I want to push on to that next level now. Yeah. But then my body was saying no. And okay. I was kind of, and also I had the drive to do it after kind of hitting your goal and achieving what you wanted. That drive just wasn't there anymore. No, no, no. It was kind yeah. of the thought of having to start again and, and do it all again. Obviously, now we go up to like professional level and you've got to do yeah. that whole thing again. I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was yeah. quite tough though, that first six months after, after I winning imagine, it. To, yeah. you know, I can imagine, particularly in your situation as well, because there's no one surrounding you, is there? It's uh, literally uh, you and you. Yeah, and you live and breathe it. It's not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you got you finish at three. You can switch off and think about something else. Yeah, like yeah. At three <laughs> o'clock, I'm thinking, what's my next meal? What yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. I, I, so I, it's, it's a 24-7 sort of thing. So, admiration for yeah. you fellas is up there, mate. Honestly. Yeah, so... um. If you could do it all again, yep. what would you do differently? Uh, it'd be hard to say anything, wouldn't it? I'd be fairly yeah. fortunate. Um, I maybe would have just gone to Toulouse. Yeah. And just thought, do you know what? If I don't get a job after this, I'll do something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
because I would have liked to have played over there, I think. Yeah. But other than that, like, you know, I could I could have left Leeds numerous times for more money, but can't take it with you, can you? No, absolutely not. And then, and for me, it's experiences like, and and I'm very fortunate to be able to say how many other people have been tagging uh, along with that team. You, you know? I mean, look, you maxed out with the league, really, didn't you? You, you got the, the, you know, you've you've won everything there. It was on yeah. the domestic scene, the, the five grand finals, the Challenge Cup. You, you know, you got yeah, what, yeah, what people could yeah. only dream about when they start picking a, a rugby ball up, really. Yeah. So, and that's it. And there's better players than me who haven't won that stuff. So, like, what what could I? I'd be a cheeky bastard to say I'd swap it. You know, would they do anything? <laughs> and, and, and nothing you would do differently with the way that you prepared, the way that you physically. Now, yes, I have learned an awful lot, but it probably similar to yourself. I don't know when. When did you start getting into bodybuilding and what have you? So I, I was like 1999, I think it was. Yeah. I started about And then when 16, did you use your, where, when did you win your universe? So yeah, 99, and then I won the universe in 2013. Yeah. So yeah. So there's 14 years there of yeah. you honing what you do. Yeah. But had you known in, was it 13, did you say? Yeah. yeah. Had you known in 13, had you known in 99 what you knew in 13, you'd have probably got there quicker and oh, stayed there longer. So. Yeah. Um, it's just difficult, isn't it? Like, it, because because for, for something that you do as well, it's so specific. Yeah. Like, someone who is an amazing, I don't know, who's the like Ronnie Coleman or something, yeah, can say, yeah. right, this is what I do to you. And it might not work for you because your physiology and everything's different. So, it, there's a certain amount of period of time that takes you to learn you. And I think, although it's less important to some extent in a team sport that you're so perfectionist like about it I think there's definitely an element of like right you get to a certain point you know what works for you um, so if you could know all that stuff a few years yeah, earlier yeah yeah, 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 yeah. you'd yeah. probably be better for longer wouldn't you in whatever that, respects yeah yeah, yeah. no definitely um, mate. but yeah that's part of the it's part of it isn't it learning the part and the frustration of like learning it like absolutely mate yeah yeah so 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 life after rugby now you've obviously like you touched on before you've got Implexus gym yeah in, in Leeds yeah. Um, which is Predominantly um, a strongman gym, is yeah, it? Yeah, it probably is the, now. Do you, know, you, you know what it was? No, I don't think it was ever really intended to be that, but that's the, the new ones. It's gone down. Is really. it more classes or is it people just coming individually in training? And we do do we do do kind of a strongman class, but it's like loosely guided. Like, um, yeah, if the, you probably want to be looking at doing this sort of stuff because it is a bit bewildering when you first get into yeah, it, especially. Yeah. So it's um, very much more like a, a strength and conditioning style gym as opposed yeah, to. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like, and I think. My, that, Box bodybuilding style, gym probably, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I think it, in terms of the business model, it probably falters in terms that some people walk in and are like, well, what do I do in here? Um, which is a shame. But I mean, you you you'll be as well versed as I am. Like, you, if you look at kind of markers of health, I know we're going a bit off piece there and segueing off a bit. But if you look at markers of health, the, probably the best thing you can do for your body is weights res or resistance exercise, whatever you want to call it. It's bang for buck, probably the best thing you can do. But people are still pissing around, jogging and all. Yeah, doing all the cardio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which don't get me wrong, there's a place for it. But if you're going to awesome. do one thing, resistance exercise works your heart as well in a good way. Not, but I think people have got like a weird thing that you they get big and your heart big, explodes yeah. and whatever. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> bloody hell, like how much work did you put in to, to, to get bigger a lot yeah, exactly so yeah, yeah. yeah there just there seems to still be like misconstrued ideas of like if you pick up a weight you get massive I mean if it was that easy it would all be you, do you know what I, I had this conversation with a client yesterday and uh, we're doing the check-ins um, for, for me man summation program we were talking about this and he was saying about you know how much muscle he wanted to put on I said, I said mate I said you're doing something you're not going to put this much muscle on. It yeah, doesn't, yeah. Like even, you know, back in the day when I'm training and I'm I'm eating the six, seven meals a day and I'm taking the supplements and everything else, it's, if I could go on stage the following year at seven pound heavier, yeah. that was a hell of a good year. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's yeah. like seven pound of lean mass. Yeah. Like you're not going to get too bulky just doing yeah. what, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that. interesting people's misconceptions yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I just think it's like a miseducation thing I don't think it's anyone's fault it's a bit no, like no. the old school food pyramid isn't it like you must eat low fat and all that kind of, and well it's probably yeah. it's probably not quite as clear cut as that is no, it absolutely but. not absolutely not so uh, you've got that obviously the, the gym um, yep. you do, you're doing the dogs as well I'm you're doing, doing the, dog, the dogs dog, dog yeah, training. not literally yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so yeah, a bit weird. Eh? So, so that, do you do the dog training? Or yeah, is that, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 love it as well. Um, so when I left Leeds, S and C wise, I worked for the RFL, predominantly doing the full time refs. Um, lockdown hit, they stopped paying me, mm. which was great. <laughs> um, so still the gym, obviously the gym's had to close, as you will be very well versed in again. Yeah, yeah. Um, which again, like right, one of the number one things that helps you survive COVID or not get COVID or whatever is exercise, but we'll shut places where people like that. Anyway, let's not get too did you, political did you much, about did, did you kind of um like divert a little bit and go online with stuff? Yeah, or, we did yeah, some yeah. we did some bits like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I did a bit bits and bats of rugby league cares, you know like for some yeah. fun stuff like body weights. Not fun for me having to do yeah. it, but fun for other people, I hope. Yeah. Um bits and bats like that. Um, well, yeah, so we did do that, but it's just one of those, wasn't it? Like, how can a, an air cell only open before somewhere that's yeah. going? But anyway, let's... Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> that's a whole other podcast. It is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I got to the point where one, through boredom, and two, through probably financial necessity, one of my mates is a builder, and he was like, look, I'm doing... We were emptying, like, a factory out in Warrington, I think it was. Started doing bits like that with him, and then just ended up working with him, which I was very grateful for, because, like, it worked out financially and it was experience wise. Like yeah. I, I actually enjoyed it, yeah. like learning some, cause I just like learning stuff. So how did you get into the dog training then? Um, so the lad who I do it with, um, Jacob Morgan, he, he was a member at my gym. I don't know when it was, but he, he was a member at my gym. He got a puppy, he brought his puppy into the gym. He's very dog friendly. Um, got to know him really well. Great lad. Um, he kind of floated off doing bits and bats. And then he ended up doing it for a different company. Um, and then sort of within lockdown, it was, well, last year, I, we'd always had kind of conversations about it. And I'd done a canine behaviorist qualification more out of interest, where he was a Christmas present off my mum. Yeah. Um, did that out of interest. I had no real intentions of using it too much. But then... He said, look, I'm not happy where I am. They're not training dogs how I think they should be trained. What would you think about doing it? So then the rest is history, pretty much. Yeah, totally. So um, you still evolved in rugby at all then now? Or? No, no. no. Uh, so I did it for a while. I did um, Tykes as well, the union team. Okay. Um, but I just haven't got time now. Like I was supposed to carry on doing that, but... I just don't have time. Not something you plan on going back to. No, anytime not really. Soon. Not no. really. It's quite fickle, this sport. Like, and like folk in the S and C park often follow a coach around. So the coach goes somewhere, then they'll go somewhere. But otherwise, it's like it's not not who you know, but it, you know, there's an element of that. Gosh, so it's yeah. like you know, it's probably easier for me to do. I absolutely love it. So because I, I still get me kind of training fix from the gym i do like some programming for some lads who do strongman i do bits and bats of pt for people that i really like to train yeah um and then train dogs the rest of the yeah. time try not to get bit i don't know yeah. exactly <laughs> cool mate well look that's we're gonna leave that there yes, um sorry, really really appreciate you coming on here mate like absolute well, leads really rhinos good, legend mate um so so thanks so much mate for coming down and, and taking the time so to, to do it uh yeah thanks a lot pal Thanks so much for listening. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And if you need any more information on the Mansformation program, just hit the link below.